Good afternoon, everyone. I hope that you're not tired by, uh, by now. So I know that this has been a long uh, day. But it was interesting. All the, I enjoyed all the talks. Uh, my talk is about HDR formats. And the question is, that, uh, what, what HDR format uh, preserves creative intent more? I've been told to stand on next. Sorry, I forgot that. Uh, so the, uh, let me give you the answer right now. There is no clear winner here. Um, so let's briefly touch on HDR WCG. What is HDR WCG? Uh, I know that most of you already know about this, uh, but like, uh, if we wanted to talk about high dynamic range WCG, we are talking about like a larger volume, right? So we are encoding larger, net, uh, sorry, uh, higher nets, and, and we, are, we are encoding wider dynamic range. So we have different uh, you know, color gamut, BT709, P3, uh, BT2020. Um, but like, essentially, HDR or WCG is about encoding larger uh, color volume. Another component that uh, comes into the HDR picture is tone mapping operation or tone mapping operators. So tone mapping is, is a, a mathematical operation to reduce the dynamic range uh, from like a higher nets to lower nets. Uh, originally, it was intended to use for HDR images, uh, tone map HDR images to be seen on the SDR uh, you know, displays. Um, but nowadays, they, they, it's been used on the HDR to HDR as well. Like, um, uh, and the, 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 the thing is that uh, no matter how good you apply your tone mapping operator, tone mapping, uh, like in, in, in essence, in nature, it produces like different look and feel. So here you see the results of different tone mapping operators on uh, if, uh, one frame from Spark. It's a Netflix open source content. You see a clear difference in terms of the uh, performance uh, and or preserving details. And also the, the, the look, look and feel of the, the original content. So uh, these days, we have a lot of advancement in the HDR workflow. So uh, in, uh, from the signal acquisition, we know that we have uh, a lot of good cameras these days. Even like in the past, they, they, they could be able to capture the higher nets, but the technology wasn't there to, to, to deliver that like a higher nets to, to users uh, to, or to, to users or homes. So the signal acquisition part is there, so we, we can capture high dynamic range. Uh, nowadays, we can uh, grade motion pictures in HDR. We have awesome uh, reference monitors. We can grade in WCG. We know how to uh, create mezzanine files. Uh, we, can, we can use like uh, intra codec like ProRes XQ. We can use JPEG 2000 to encode uh, you know, HDR. Uh, and, and create mezzanine files in HDR. And then we have encode and deliver uh, HDR formats uh, uh, like the HDR10, HLG, Dolby Vision, HDR10+, Plus, so we can, we can have them in the delivery pipeline and then uh, deliver HDR signal to uh, users' homes. And we have players and displays. Now we have like a, HDR displays and TVs. They can play HDR. They support different EOTF functions or HDR EOTF functions. Um, they have like a, they are capable of showing you like a higher nets or so, something like a wide color gamut. Uh, we have players that they can uh, you know play HDR. But now the, the 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 main question here is that why we still need tone mapping. So if, if originally the tone mapping was to uh, shrink the dynamic range, reduce the dynamic range from higher dynamic range to SDR, now that we have all the pieces and, 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 and components in the HDR workflow uh, to, to be like a HDR compliance, why we are talking uh, about tone mapping, why we're still talking about tone mapping, and tone mapping is very important. So the, uh, the answer is that even though consumer TVs, HDR TVs, and displays, they claim that they support HDR, but um, um, the truth is that like, they don't support uh, the high nets edge to edge. So when you talk about reference monitors, they, they, they are capable of giving you like 1,000 nets, 4,000 nets edge to edge. Um, and at the same time, like, if you look at the even high end TVs that they claim that they support like 600 nets, 800 nets or so, they, they support that or they give you high nets for just certain percentage of that frame. So if you have the sun somewhere of the frame, and then that will be less than that specific percentage, you may get like the maximum nets out of that TV. But other than that, so the capability of the TV is actually lower than the capability of the like a reference monitor. So we have to apply tone mapping these days. So basically, uh, HDR, even these days, is all about tone mapping. So you, you apply tone mapping, and the TV does tone mapping for you. And, um, and that's why the tone mapping is still needed. 
Uh, so without having a, an objective measure to, uh, to measure the, uh, the accuracy of like the tone map image or the, the structure detail loss on the tone map frame, uh, it's very difficult to, uh, to, uh, to assess the, the, the performance of different HDR formats. So like a, a tone mapping shrinks the dynamic range and, 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 and structure detail loss and the losing the natural look and feel is kind of uh, inevitable. So there, there should be some measure to, uh, to assess the structure fidelity loss after tone mapping. So uh, simplest, simplest structure fidelity is invented to basically give you a, a good picture or, or, or good insight in terms of the, um, the how much structure detail loss you have after tone mapping. So this, this image is the Memorial Church in Stanford. The courtesy goes to Paul Debevec. Um, I hadn't had a chance to see Memorial Church until just a few days ago that I uh, made a trip to, to Stanford and I saw this. I've been working on this image for, uh, since 2009 and it was my pleasure that to just see this, this, this scene uh, in person. But anyway, so you see the, the results of the different tour mapping operators. So it, uh, in TMO2, you see like the, that there are lots of structure are gone in, in window and dome, and basically a structure fidelity map tells you uh, the same story. So the darker pixel means you have uh, more structure detail loss. So there are details uh, like on windows and on, even on floors and like in dome that are missing, and the structure fidelity tells you the same story. But the, on the other hand, like there is another tone mapping operator that keeps uh, a lot of details. Uh, in the highlight, uh, but, but it loses some information or details in shadow. So these are the two extreme cases that they're very common in HDR tone mapping. So in, when, when it comes to HDR, you may lose a lot of details in highlight or, or in shadow detail, and you need to have a good measure to, to see um, uh, you know, uh, um, where that structural detail loss happened or located in your frame. Um, so long story short, so how we can compare different HDR uh, formats. You know that we have HDR10, Dolby Vision, um, HDR10+, Plus, and also HLG. So there is a bucket, H, uh, uh, HDR10, Dolby Vision, and, and HDR10+, Plus, that they are called display referred, and HLG is scene referred, so I'm not talking about HLG. And then I wanted to talk about only this bucket uh, that, that includes HDR10, HDR10+, Plus, and, and, and uh, Dolby Vision. Unfortunately, for HDR10, there is no um, uh, reference implementation. Like everyone does its own kind of H HDR10. So some TV, they do clipping. Some TV, they do like a, their own kind of tone mapping. And in fact, that if you mess up with the uh, static metadata, like max full and max serial, nothing happens on, 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 on the picture. So uh, trust me, you can just you know, put a, a crazy number in max full and max serial, and you get this exactly the same picture. So I ignore HDR10 in my comparison, and I, I, comparison, I go directly to HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision. So I did some experiment here. Uh, for my experiment, what I did, I took some uh, unconstrained mezzanine files. Uh, they, are, they were graded in 4,000 nits. I encoded them in HDR10 Plus uh, and Dolby Vision Profile 5. And then I use a very like a high bitrate values in order to just you know um, uh, produce the chance of seeing like a compression artifact. Um, and then I decoded those frames. I like, decoded these frames and uh, I set the target peak luminance of the display uh, or the target display peak luminance to be like 300 nits. Uh, and I use like a Dolby uh, and, and, and and Samsung like SDK uh, to to decode basically Dolby Vision and HDR10 plus. I need to uh, uh, put a disclaimer here. Uh, nothing in this medium is HDR, right? Like the, like the, the slides, the, 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 the projector, and everything is not HDR. And uh, you, what you see here is the SDR look of HDR content. But I try to pick some HDR content that even in the SDR look shows kind of a, a difference in the Dolby Vision and HDR10+. Plus. Uh, so this is one of the frame, uh, like one of the, uh, the uh, source frame uh, from the mezzanine file. Again, the courtesy goes to Netflix, open source content. You see that we have different nets. And in terms of dynamic range, there are some places that goes to like a 500 nets, and there are some places that goes to like a 20 net or so. So if you uh, decode the content, um, uh, and HDR10+, plus, you see this look, and then if you go and decode the content in Dolby Vision, you see this look. Again, the target display is 300 nits. Of course, this, this display is not 300 nits, but I try to pick some content that shows the difference. 
Apart from the color shift that you see here, that I'm, uh, if I have time, I will be talking about it, you see that the, in terms of the structure details, um, the, in this particular frame, the HDR uh, temp or the dual vision is showing you more details uh, on chest, right? And the, the, the structure fidelity basically tells you the same story. So the st structure fidelity score that you see here is the for, for, for the whole frame and not for that crop vision of the frame. So this is another example, like a 500 nits. Uh, if you do the HDR10 plus uh, dual vision, you see some difference. Both uh, version, like uh, both HDR formats, struggle with shadow details. So if you look at the uh, this region, so you see that in both they are struggling with keeping details in shadow. Um, but in this particular frame, dual vision preserves more in, in highlight detail. But is it uh, the same story for the different frames? No, it's not. Like it it's, it's highly depends on the assets. So for this one, again, we have a crazy net. I don't know why they do this, but like it's 8,000 nits or something around the sun. Uh, but if you go to HDR10+, Dolby Vision, and then you compare difference, uh, or sorry, you compare these two uh, HDR formats, you see that again, both HDR formats struggle with highlight detail. So around the sun, but in this case, uh, you see this, like um, around the sun, we have diff uh, difficulties in preserving details in, in from both HDR10 plus and Dolby Vision. But HDR10 plus seems to preserve more of highlight detail here. So like uh, if you look at the HDR10 plus structure fidelity map, you see more like it's, it's wider pixels or on, 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 or, uh, on water basically. So the same, uh, so in Do Dolby Vision, you see lots, uh, lots of uh, you know, structure detail loss or dark pixels in structure fidelity. So basically, you have lost some details on, uh, on water and around the sun. So from the same asset, different uh, frame, you see uh, a different story. So in this frame, we have a very good dynamic range, very, very low nets and very high nets. So again, if you go to the HDR10 plus Dolby Vision, you compare these two, you see that both, again, they are struggling with the high, high, keeping like a highlight. But Adobe Vision, in this case, is preserving better details or more details around the highlight, but at the same time, it, 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 doesn't, have, it doesn't do a good job in keeping the structure in, in shadow. So, like, but uh, in HDR10+, Plus is a little bit worse in highlight, but it's keeping more detail in, in, in shadow. Again, this, 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 uh, all the mediums that you see here in SDR, is, there is no HDR. That's why um, perhaps you have difficulties just focusing on the details that I'm showing you here. So, uh, uh, I briefly touch on the color volume difference, the color shift that we have. Uh, again, like uh, every time that you compare HDR10 plus and Dolby Vision, you may, you may notice a color shift as well. So here I, I picked Meridian from open source content. Again, not Netflix open content. And uh, in, uh, in the left hand side, you see mezzanine. In your right hand side, you see HDR10 plus. Um, but in Dolby Vision, you see like a more uh, uh, visible you know, color shift. So, uh, if you uh, apply like a color volume difference that we have, you provide in Simplus, so you see that like uh, 10.9, it, which, which is a kind of an impercept, um, imperceptible range, but if you go to Dolby Vision, it's kind of 22.77, so it's kind of uh, perceptible, but not very annoying. So in summary, um, again, uh, back to my first comment, there is no clear winner here. Uh, HDR10 plus Dolby Vision, when you compare these two, it's, it, it highly comes to like, uh, the contents, it's content dependence. But like, without having any measure and an objective measure to give you insight about what's happening after tone mapping, optimizing Dolby Vision tone mapping and, or HDR10 plus tone mapping, tone mapping is kind of directionless. Uh, if you have any more questions regarding this talk, please shoot me an email. This is my email and thank you very much. Mm -hmm.